first one is page numbers go away. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> we got the uh, two. Do you want to get an
Good morning and welcome to worship here at Community United Methodist Church. We are so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. And if you came in late and noticed us singing some Christmas carols, we would love to invite you to come maybe 10 minutes or so early to worship. We're singing Christmas carols every Sunday in Advent. So we'd love for you to join us for that. And if you have any of your music books left, just make sure you put them back on that front pew before we leave uh, so that we can have them all for next week. Just a reminder, our Christmas Eve worship will be uh, Christmas Eve at 4 p.m. and we are not having worship on Christmas Day. Um, poinsettia order deadline is next Sunday, December 11th. So please get that filled out if you would like to order poinsettias. And the, dead, uh, the deadline is next week, but the cost is $10. Also, if you take home any of our flowers uh, that we get on our altar, if you could just make sure to bring the pot back. The florist would like some of the pots back. So if you would bring those back if you get flowers. And I believe those are all of our announcements for this morning.
Good morning, saints. Happy New Year. Thank you. Now, if you think I, if you think I've lost my mind, please look at the parish bulletin board out front, and you'll see it says something. Advent begins the new Christian year. Are we Christians? Yes. Happy New Year, Christians. Another little understanding. Here is the hidden book, the discipline. And most of you say, what's that? That's the point. Gary asked me about this book and we've talked about it once or twice before. This is the book that tells us who we are as Christians conformed into a community called United Methodists. And there's a lot of great stuff in here. And you'll see excerpts of it now in the monthly paper, because we're taking one article each week, each month, and it's going into the paper. So you know what we believe as stated in the discipline, okay? There's a comment about Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. And it talks about how Christ is really present here under the forms of bread and wine. With that, that's enough. We'll go on. Next, the prayer that I'll be sharing with you is not my own. Each House of Congress has a clergy person that opens up every session of Congress each day that they meet with a prayer. And I'd like to share with you as our prayer here, one that was so powerful to me. And I wanted you to be aware that we do have a recognition of spirituality and religion in our Congress. And some people don't think that, but here goes. Shall we pray? God, our Father, determiner of human history, we come together from the world of meetings, chores, responsibilities, the morning headlines, and the Dow Jones average to pause, to praise, to give thanks. Disturb us, Lord. Ruffle us from our complacency. Make us dissatisfied with the peace of ignorance, the false peace which arises from a shunning of the horror the defeat, the bitterness, and the spiritual and physical poverty of people. Shock us, Lord. Deny to us the false Sabbath, which give us the delusion of satisfaction amid a world of war and hatred. Wake us, Lord, and shake us from the sweet, sad memories made real by half-forgotten melodies and written prayers of yesterday. Make us know that your temples are not shelters from the winds of truth, justice, and reality. Grant us integrity and your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want copies, I'll make some for you. Let's get to the bulletin. Who are the ministers of this congregation? Good. Who's the pastor? Good. It's all there for you. And so first him is 216. If you'll stand, please. 216.
page 881. I think you know what's coming, don't you? 881. Now, was this creed written by the apostles? No. It was written by the followers of the apostles. However, you'll notice the creed right next to it, the Nicene Creed. December 6th is St. Nicholas Day. St. Nicholas has been morphed into Santa Claus. But St. Nicholas really lived, and he helped to write this Nicene Creed. He lived in Smyrna, Turkey. Not New Smyrna, Smyrna, Turkey. The Apostles' Creed, 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. invite up Pat Dietrich and Billy Morrison for the lighting of our Advent wreath as we hear a reading from them on the love of God and we light the candle of love. John 3, 16, 17. Speak it out. For God so loved the world that he gave his almost one and only son that who ever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Today, on the second Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of love. May we be reminded that Jesus came into the world at Christmas because of the great love the Father has for us. We are reminded that because of the love of God, we can have eternal life in Jesus Christ. May we experience the love of God this Advent season, and may we show those we encounter the love of God as well. May the love and light of Christ shine in the darkness of the Advent season. Amen. 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 Thank you. Our next hymn is hymn number 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And since last week we sang the first four verses, we'll be singing the last three verses this week.
this time I'd like to invite our ushers to take up our offering. Remember that we give not only of our money, but our time and our resources and our talents. So maybe spend this time as the, as the song plays, even thinking about the ways that you can offer yourself to the Lord in thanksgiving and praise today. be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you on this second Sunday of Advent, bringing our tithes and offering to you, and bringing not just our money, but our time and our resources and our talents. And we give these to you and ask, Lord, that you would take them and bless them, that you would use them for your glory. 
so that more and more people could come to know you as more ministries and missions are funded at this church. Lord, we ask that you would guide us as a finance team, especially that we would use these gifts in a way that is faithful to you, in a way that glorifies you. Lord, we also come to you on this second Sunday of Advent, and we ask that you would help us to anticipate the birth of your son, Jesus, that you would help us to be expectantly waiting for that baby to come in a manger, but also for you to come again one day. Lord, help us in the busyness of this season to remember what this time is all about, the birth of your son, Jesus, God in the flesh coming and dwelling among us. Today we lit the candle of love on the Advent wreath, and we thank you for the love that you have so graciously and generously poured out on us. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to embody your love to all who we come into contact with, that all people who meet with us or speak with us or interact with us would experience your love in us. Lord, we ask that we would be a people who shine your light into the darkness. And Lord, we lift up those stories in the news where there is darkness. The top story yesterday on CNN was a little girl kidnapped and murdered in Texas. And we cannot even comprehend what that family is going through. And so Lord, we pray for comfort and strength for her parents and grandparents and siblings and all who knew her. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them, especially so close to Christmas, that they would feel your love with them. Lord, we lift up stories to you in the new stories of shootings, and we pray for your peace. We pray for your love to rain down. We lift up to you Ukraine and the war there, and we pray for peace. We pray, Lord, for an end to injustice in all places. And while focused on Ukraine, I'm sure there are other places in the world who are fighting and struggling with war and violence as well. And we lift those places up to you, Lord, and we pray for your peace and your justice to reign. We pray that we, as your people, all made in your image, would learn to embody your love, that we would be able to love one another, love those who are different from us, love those who think and act differently than us, love those as you have loved us. Lord, may we embody your love this Christmas season. Lord, may we embody your love this Advent and even after this season is over. May we be a people who embody your love all the days of our lives. Lord, we come to you, many of us tired, maybe some of us struggling with sicknesses, colds going around. And we pray for your healing. We pray for your restoration. We pray that you would fill us with your peace and your presence. Yesterday, we had a funeral here in the sanctuary uh, for the Turley family, for Robert Turley. And we pray for that family, for his wife, especially his wife, Pat, and his daughter, Stacy and Tracy. We pray for your comfort and healing for them, that they would feel your peace with them, that they would feel your strength. And Lord, we ask for all of us going through different emotions this season, maybe some of us excited about Christmas, maybe some of us struggling and dreading it. Maybe it's the first Christmas without a loved one. We ask that you would comfort us and help us to feel your peace, feel your hope and your joy and your love in this season, no matter where we are on the spectrum of excitement or struggling this season. We thank you that you are a God who is not far off and distant, but a God who is with us. That is what we celebrate at Christmas, a God who is with us, Emmanuel, God with us, that you come and dwell with us, that you are always with us. And we thank you and praise you that you will never leave us or forsake us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you and praise you for the ways in which you are moving in this church we ask that you would bless our ministries, especially our food pantry and our clothes closet, 
that you would help us to shine our light to all who come into our doors. Shine not our light, Lord, shine your light so that others may come to know you and love you for themselves. Lord, we thank you and praise you for our many volunteers who make these ministries happen, for our many volunteers who help our church to grow and thrive and flourish. And so we ask that you would bless all of us in these next coming weeks as we head toward Christmas, that we would not grow weary, but that we would fix our eyes on you and trust in you. And now we join together in praying the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Last week, if you were here with us, we looked at the scripture reading where the angel appeared to Zechariah in the temple and told him that he and his wife, Elizabeth, would have a child, John, who would grow up to be John the Baptist, preparing the way for Jesus. Today, we're looking at a scripture passage I'm sure many of you have heard many times. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. This is where the angel comes and appears to Mary. And I want to encourage you, no matter how many times you have heard it, it can be easy this season to think, oh, yeah, I know that story. But to listen with fresh ears to see how the Lord might be speaking to us today. So would you hear the word of the Lord from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38? In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word, which was given to us this day. We ask that you would speak to us, not just to our ears, but to our hearts, that we would hear a message from you, that we would be transformed into your likeness. And Lord, I ask that this message I have prepared would not be my own, but would be from you. Use me as a vessel. May your Holy Spirit flow through me so that we may have an encounter with you. Speak to us, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. Have you ever received news that changed the course of your life? And I'm talking about for the better. I think some of us have maybe received news that changed it for the worse sometime. But have you ever received news that truly changed your life and put you on a new path in a great way? Maybe it was a college acceptance letter that you had been accepted and were going off to school. Perhaps it was a job offer from a place that you wanted to be hired at so desperately. Maybe it was finding out that you had been healed of a sickness. Or maybe it was finding out that you were going to be a parent for the very first time. 
Perhaps it was finding out you had received a, a large sum of money, maybe to pay off a debt or buy a new house or put down a down payment on a new house. Good news that would transform the course of your life. I can't help but think of my dad and the day he was hired at the fire department. That job offer changed the course of his life. Uh, my dad doesn't have a college degree, and when I was first born, he worked at a rubber factory for about seven years, I believe, and he absolutely hated that job. But he worked at that job, and he stayed at that job, and some of you might relate, not necessarily because it paid well or was the best job, but because he had three children and it had great health insurance. Especially for a child like me with a heart condition, my dad could not leave that job until he had another one that had as good or better health insurance. And so he stuck out a job at a job that he hated because of the benefits for his family. But one day he was hired as a firefighter, a job that wouldn't just be a job for him, but something he could make a career out of. Like I said, I think I was about six or seven years old when he was hired there, and he absolutely loved that job, and he still does. He has kind of climbed the ladder in the fire department, and he now isn't the one going in the buildings on the fires, but is the one commanding the scene, telling everyone else what to do. And I can't help but think that news, that phone call, you're hired, forever changed the course of his life. And because of that news, it had a ripple effect in our family and forever changed the course of me and my sister's lives. As you can imagine, I think it's different to be raised by someone who loves their job than someone who hates their job. And how that rubbed off on us and getting to experience someone who was happy to go to work and serve others. Maybe you have something in your life that forever changed the course of your life for the good. In today's scripture, a young woman named Mary received good news that would forever change the course of her life. She receives good news from an angel, Gabriel, and this good news will not just change the course of her life for the better, but this news will change the course of human history for better. In the church, we use a fancy word called the, called the Annunciation for today's scripture passage, but it simply means announcement. And what an announcement it was, so much better than a you're hired offer or you're accepted here to school. This announcement was you will be the mother of the Son of God. Now, I will warn those of you, if you were at our Advent sun, uh, study this week, some of this might be a little bit of review. We talked a lot about Mary, but I hope it's good review this morning. Mary was a young woman living in Nazareth, a tiny town in Galilee. And she might have been as young as 13 years old when the angel Gabriel appeared to her to bring her this good news, to give her this announcement. In ancient Israel, it was pretty common for women to marry anywhere between ages 13 and 16. So I want you to think about this this morning. Think about what were you doing at age 13? I was in the eighth grade when I was 13 a middle schooler, uh, my time taken up mostly by school, hanging out with friends, uh, babysitting to get some spending money. I wasn't too into sports, but I was very involved in the arts and music and dance, and I was involved with my local United Methodist youth group. Maybe you were involved in sports, maybe you had a paper route to make extra money, or maybe like me, you made extra money babysitting. But think back to that time when you were 13 years old, could you imagine an angel appearing to you? Most of us dream our whole life of having this kind of encounter with the Lord. But can you imagine an angel appearing to you and telling you that you will be the mother of the Son of God? And so the angel Gabriel comes bringing good news to Mary, news that she will be the mother of the Savior of the world, and good news, even when it's really good, even when it's exciting, it can still be scary all at the same time. Ask any woman when she finds out or found out that she was pregnant with her first child, even if it was a very much wanted pregnancy, she was maybe questioning and feeling a little scared. What is life gonna be like as a new mom? How much is life going to change? 
fears over maybe the health of pregnancy and what labor and delivery will be like. Good, exciting news can be scary news as well. And so on one hand, I cannot comprehend, even begin to comprehend the feelings Mary must have felt at maybe age 13, finding out she was pregnant with the savior of the world. I can understand a little bit, feeling called by God from a young age for the Lord's purposes. While I know this sounds pretty crazy, I think I shared with you before, maybe in my first sermon, that I first felt called to ministry when I was 12 years old in seventh grade going through our confirmation class. And for those of you maybe who didn't grow up in the United Methodist Church, confirmation is basically a class you go through where you learn about your faith and confirm those baptismal vows your parents made on your behalf. When you say yes to the Lord and say, yes, I want to follow you for myself. And so while it was at this young age in confirmation class that I first felt this stirring of a call to ministry. I felt called to be a pastor to teach others about the Lord. Now, was I excited about this calling? Absolutely not. I was terrified. I was terrified. I tried to ignore and run from this calling for my teenage years and college years. I thought there was no way I'm going to get up and preach a sermon every single Sunday. And yet I am amazed that that is exactly what I've been doing the past six years. But good news, exciting news, can be just as scary as it is good. Good news, exciting news pulls us out of our comfort zones, and that can be scary. That was the case for me, and even more so, that was the case for Mary. Many of us have heard this story many times. The angel Gabriel appearing to Mary is one, if not the most famous passage in all of Scripture. And so many of us have heard it many times. We might not realize how scary this would have been for Mary. Imagine being 13, not married, and finding out you are pregnant. Is anyone going to believe? Is anyone going to believe that you are pregnant with the Son of God? Will her parents believe her? Will her fiancé Joseph believe her? And we'll talk more about Joseph in a couple of weeks, but based on scripture, it sounds like Joseph didn't really believe her at first. He had in mind to divorce her quietly, but thankfully the angel changed his mind when he appeared to him in a dream. But we'll talk more about Joseph in a couple more weeks. But imagine being Mary, 13 years old, and finding out that she will be the mother of the Son of God. The long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of the world, what a wonderful, exciting, but absolutely terrifying calling. But Mary's response at the end of today's scripture, and I'm so amazed by this, is, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. This Advent season, what would it look like for us if our lives, if every day we prayed this prayer, these words of Mary, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled in my life. As I hear these words of Mary, I, I can't help but think ahead to Jesus as a grown adult near the end of his life. As Jesus heads to the cross, he is praying in the garden, not my will, but thy will be done. I imagine that Jesus is able to pray these words, able to pray this prayer, because he spent his life growing up seeing his mother's obedience to the Lord modeled for him his entire life. A mother who perhaps as young as age 13 learned that she was pregnant with the Son of God. A mother whose response to the angel Gabriel was, I am the Lord's servant, may your word to me be fulfilled. Maybe you also have a mother or a grandmother, an aunt or a neighbor who modeled her faith to you like Mary. Perhaps you learned obedience to the Lord from watching others' obedience to the Lord. I imagine Jesus growing up and seeing his mother over and over being obedient to the Lord and perhaps even thinking of his mother as he prayed in the garden. May I be obedient like her, even though I'm afraid just like my mother was obedient when she was afraid. May that be all of our prayers this Advent and truly all the days of our life. May we be obedient. May we be servants to the Lord even when we are afraid. May we pray like Jesus, not my will, but thy will be done. 
There's a Christmas song that comes on the radio a lot this time of year, especially a Christian radio called Mary, Did You Know? And it goes through these different things, imagining did Mary truly comprehend that her son would grow up to do these things? And so I won't quote the whole song for you, but here are just some of the lyrics to think about. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Mary, did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Now, I've heard people over the years, lately in more recent years, say, yes, she knew the angel told her these things. And while, yes, I'm sure that is true, I don't think she truly comprehended at age 13 when the angel appeared to her what her son Jesus was going to do not just in her life, but for all of humanity, that he would come and save his people, that he would be uh, the savior of the world. I'm not sure in that moment that Mary fully grasped what her life and Jesus' life would look like. I'm sure she never imagined her son being killed on a cross. What mother wants to imagine that? But even though she didn't know all the details, Mary still said yes to the angel. She still agreed to be the Lord's servant. She still said, may your word to me be fulfilled. I don't know about you, but oftentimes when the Lord calls me to do something, I wish he would give me all of the details. We want a precise step-by-step -step instruction of what the Lord is going to do. You know, like your GPS on your car, turn right here, yield here, make a left here. But I have never experienced the Lord giving me those kind of precise details. It's usually more like, keep trusting, keep following, I'm still with you. The Lord does not promise us a clear cut, easy path. The Lord doesn't promise us step by step instructions like a GPS, how we are to follow him. But the Lord does promise us to always be with us. When the angel first appeared to Mary, the first thing the angel said was, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with Mary on the scariest day of her life. The Lord is going to continue to be with Mary throughout her pregnancy, with people and her fiance questioning her. The Lord will be with her when she travels to Bethlehem to deliver her baby. The Lord will be with her as she raises her son, the son of God. And the Lord will even be with her on the hardest day of her life when she is watching her son, that baby she held, dying on a cross. The Lord was always with her, is with her, and will always be with her. And this truth is, is the same truth for each and one of us. No matter what hardships you are going through, no matter what difficulties you are going through, the Lord is always with us. The Lord has always been with us. The Lord will always be with us. And the Lord will always continue to be with us in the future. The Lord is with us when he calls us out of our comfort zones. The Lord is with us when he calls us to do scary things. Will we be obedient? and trust in him like Mary? I hope the answer is yes. Right now our church is facing difficult times. Attendance I know has declined since COVID pandemic, much like many other churches. Along with that, like many other churches, giving declined with the pandemic. I know it's been difficult. I believe I'm the fourth pastor here in about an 18 month period. And it can, easy, it can be easy to be scared. It can be easy to worry, what does the future hold for this church? And I won't pretend to know all of those answers, but what I do know is this, the Lord is with us. He is always with us and will always be with us. And we can choose to be fearful or we can choose to be hopeful. We can be obedient and trust in the Lord and be like Mary and say, we are your servants. May your word be fulfilled. 
The Lord was with Mary and is with all of us because the Lord loves us so deeply. This morning, we lit the candle of love on the Advent wreath, reminding us that Jesus came to earth because of the great Father's love for us, our great Father's love for us. We are reminded that love is embodied by Jesus Christ. Simply put, Jesus is love. And as followers of Christ, we are to embody that love of Christ to all we need so that others, when they have an encounter with us, they experience the love of Christ in us. This week, I was blessed to see the love of Christ embodied here in this congregation. This week, we had someone in our church uh, who was in a car accident in our parking lot. And so many people ran out to check on him and show him love. I saw the love of our church when we circled up and prayed for him as the ambulance took him to the hospital. I saw the love of a friend who spent the entire day with him to make sure he was okay. I saw the love of someone who came into our pantry the very next day and said, I made a peanut butter pie in honor of him since it's his favorite. I saw the love of another uh, person in our congregation who said, I will drive him to church every Sunday so he can be there. That is the love of Christ embodied in this congregation. I was so proud to be your pastor. I was so proud to be part of this church this week. That is what the love of Christ is supposed to do. That is how the love of Christ is to be embodied and lived out. Yes, Jesus was the son of God and had his heavenly father who loved him and showed him what love looks like. But Jesus was also fully human. And that fully human part of him had a mother here in the flesh with him to show him what love looks like. Jesus got to experience earthly love in the flesh from his mother. I know that some of us here maybe didn't have the best of mothers. Maybe some here didn't have a good relationship with your mother. But for those of us who did, I hope that you see that love in mothers or other good mothers and think Mary would have been like that to her son, Jesus. A mother's love is supposed to be one of the strongest loves on the planet. And I know we fail sometimes as a people. But how often have you know mothers who would say they would die for their child? I'm sure that's how Mary loved her son, Jesus. I'm sure Jesus learned so much about love from his mother. And because of the love of his mother, he was able to pour out love on those disciples, pour out love on those he healed and taught. And most of all, that his love was poured out on the cross for all of us so that we could be forgiven and experience eternal life. But this all started with a young 13-year-old girl saying yes. It started out with a young 13-year-old girl saying yes to God's call on her life. Because of her obedience, because of her love for her son, we know Jesus, the savior of the world. Now I know I shared Mary, did you know, a popular Christmas song about Mary. Uh, But recently my husband Jesse showed me a newer Christmas song called Just a Girl. And this is how that song ends. Just a king, just a million angels crowding in to see. Jesus there among humanity, just a babe, just minutes old there trembling in the hay, staring at his mother in the face. She's just a girl, just a girl. Does she even know that she has just changed the world? Does she even know that he will save the world? Does Mary know that he will save the world? She's just a girl. In a culture and a time where women weren't viewed the best, God used a woman, really just a young girl, to change the course of human history. May we this Advent season be reminded of that, how the Lord uses kind of a nobody from a no-name town to accomplish his amazing purposes. How might the Lord want to use you this Advent season for his purposes, for his glory? How might the Lord want to use this church for his purposes? Will we be like Mary and say yes to God's call? Will we be willing to be obedient? I hope so. And I hope in our obedience, we embody Christ's love to all we meet. 
In today's scripture, we learned of a mother's love, but that mother's love was born out of our heavenly father's love for the world. May we embody that world to all who we come into contact with. May others see the love of Christ in us this Advent season. May we love as the Father and the Son have loved us. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for the obedience of Mary, her willingness to serve you, even when her calling was scary. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to be obedient to your will as well, that we would step out in faith, step out of our comfort zones, and serve you even when you are calling us to new and scary places. Lord, we ask that in our obedience, we would not just be obedient, but that we would embody and show the world your love that through our obedience, others who come into contact with us would see your light in us, would see your love in us. Lord, we thank you for your love, that you love the world so much you sent your one and only son to live and dwell among us. And so Lord, we ask that we would embody that same love for the entire world, that others may come to know your love through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our communion hymn for today is hymn number 615. Or actually, we're going to do 614. It's the same exact words, but a different melody. For the bread which you have broken. Merciful God, we confess that we have 
have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here in the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from, from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He gave himself up for us. He took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and said, take and eat. This is my body which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. You may notice this morning things look a little differently up here. Uh, for the first time, I think, since COVID, we're having communion at the altar rail. If you would like to receive communion here. If you are not comfortable with that, though, we still have our other uh, little communion things. If you would like to take those, you're really well. But I just would like to invite you at this time to uh, kind of come up orderly and as you feel led. Uh, but remember that this table is an open table. You do not need to be a Methodist member to take communion here. All that we ask is that you want a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to receive that love of Christ we have talked about today, if you want to be filled with that love and take that love out to the world, come and receive the body and blood of Jesus and say,
Our hymn of response is hymn number 215, To a Maid Engaged to Joseph. Would you stand and sing together this hymn?
Would you receive this blessing before we leave? This Advent season, may you listen and hear the calling of God in your life. May you be obedient like Mary, and may you go and live out a life of, a life of obedience and a life embodying the love of Christ. Go in peace. Amen.